Welcome to a video on doing the math. Doing math in chemistry. And in chemistry, the math is going to be slightly different than you're used to when you're doing math in a math class. So we're going to learn how to multiply, divide, add, and subtract, basically to do some simple math, but using numbers that have error embedded in them. So as an example, I'm going to ask you to find the area of this box. I give you a yellow box and I give you two terrible rulers from 0 to 10 meters long each one and I want you to tell me what the area of that yellow box is. The yellow box area, it, it's a little difficult to figure out actually. You have to figure out, first of all, what are the actual dimensions? Now I would say that the box is 4 meters high by 3 meters wide but reasonable people can reasonably disagree. And I would assume any measurement of the height of that box between four and five meters and a width between three to two meters would be reasonable that although we would disagree, we could each agree that we were intelligent people and that it was a reasonable estimate. So if I did the calculation using three, a four by three box, I would get 12 square meters. But Depending on how you made your measurements, you might find an area of that yellow box from anywhere between 6 to 15 square meters. So which one is the correct answer? And the, the correct answer is none of them. The correct answer is actually 10 square meters. And we're going to talk about why. When you are multiplying or dividing a number, you need to count the number of significant figures in each of the numbers you're about to multiply or divide, then you figure out which one has the smallest number of significant figures, and then you multiply or divide your numbers like you normally would, and round at the very end to the number of significant figures that is the smallest. So the yellow square gave us this math, 4 meters by 3 meters. Well, 4 meters has one significant figure. Remember, in significant figures, you report all of the numbers that you know for sure in your one guess. So four is just a guess, really, based on that ruler. Three meters had one sig fig, and therefore, since they're both one, they're both equally small, and I can only have one significant figure in my answer. So four times three is equal to 12, but I need that to be rounded to one significant figure. So if I made a list of all the numbers that have one significant figure, I'd get a list of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then I have to jump to twenty because ten has one significant figure and twenty has one significant figure and then thirty and forty and so on. Well twelve is not very close to twenty. The closest one significant figure number is ten. So in a chemistry class, 4 meters times 3 meters is equal to 10 square meters. I know that sounds weird, 4 times 3 does not equal 10, but in a math class you have to remember you're dealing with numbers that have zero error, that are perfect. But in a chemistry class, everything you do will have an error associated with it. If you want a better answer, you have to use better measurements. So let's take a look at this problem again, but this time I'm going to give you better rulers. What's the area of this square? My best guess would, that, would be that you should come up with a height between 5.9 and 6 meters and a width of between 3.9 and 4 meters. Now personally I would go with 6.0 for the height and 4.0 for the width and I would get an answer of 24 square meters. But it wouldn't be unreasonable for you to get an answer anywhere from 23.01 to 24. Now the spread here is much smaller um, and the reason is that because your measurements were much more precise because of the more precise equipment I gave you to measure with. Because your answers are more precise you can give me more significant figures in your answer. So this time you can give two significant figures saying that you're reasonably sure it's 20 okay, and you're guessing that it's 24. So that's a guess. Could it have been 23? Sure. And look at all the answers. 23.6, 23.4. Half of them would round to 23 and half of them would round to 24. So 23, 24, eh, you're reasonably close there. Now there's a different set of error of rules if you're adding or subtracting numbers. So when you add or subtract, it'll be the same procedure but you're going to use decimal places instead of significant figures. So you'll identify the smallest number of decimal places and then add or subtract your numbers as usual 
and finally round to the smallest number of decimal places. So let me give you an example. Say your teacher tells you and your lazy lab partner to measure these pieces of equipment and that you're eventually going to connect together. You spend a long time and you measure really carefully with a lot of different pieces of equipment and you come up with an answer of 1.500 meters long. Now what you're sending the message here is that you spent a lot of time, that you know for sure it's 1.50 and you're guessing at that second zero because you spent a lot of time with some good equipment. Now your lab partner didn't get a lot of sleep, uh, doesn't really care, he shows up and he says, I think it's two meters. So when you add your two pieces together, how long is that, that combined piece? If you said that the combined piece was 3.500 meters long, you sent us a message about how much error you believed in there. Was it the right message? If you say that the answer is 3.500 meters long, you're saying you know for sure that 3 is right, the 5 is right, and the first 0 is definite, and that you're really guessing about that last 0. But you can't say that. Your lab partner barely opened his eyes and guessed at 2 meters. So if you said that the correct answer was 3 meters long, you also sent us a message that the 3 meters is a pure guess. So is that what you wanted to say? Let's do a formal walkthrough of the math here. 1.500 meters has three decimal places. Two meters has one decimal place. So we're gonna go under the principle that says the chain is only as strong as its weakest link. And the weakest link here was your lab partner who barely measured. And since they gave you no decimal places, your answer cannot have any decimal places. So do the math as usual, 1.5 plus 2 gives you 3.500, but that's got three decimal places. So we need to round that to the nearest whole number, so we get a number with no decimal places. And then we're going to either say that our answer is 3 or 4, depending on how your teacher tells you to round that 0.5. Some sample problems. Keep the rules in mind that you just learned and solve these problems. Pause the video here for a few seconds. Give yourself time to answer and think through. Again, answers. 2.75 plus 27.5. I rounded to 30.2 because the 27.5 only has one decimal place and I'm adding. 40 times 7 well, I'm multiplying, so I need to look at significant figures, and 40 only has one significant figure. So when I multiply, my 280 needs to get rounded to a number that has one significant figure. 27 divided by 3, again, is division. I need to look at significant figures. So if you just wrote down 9, you only gave me one sig fig where you could give 2. 33 minus 1.1, I'm subtracting, so I need to look at decimal places, and my answer can have no decimal places because 33 doesn't have any. So my answer is 32. Be sure that when you're doing math and chemistry that you go deeper than you would in a math class. Follow the rules and look for significant figures when you multiply and divide, and look for uh, decimal places when you add and subtract. Good luck.